it's only been maybe five years ago, someone asked me about my past and how I was raised. And just having that conversation, believe it or not, just really opened my eyes. Well, you know, that explains everything. That, you know, it's like, that's why I'm the way that I am. Um, but really what happened when I was 12, I lost my parents. So it was traumatic. It couldn't, you know, it's just one of those things that happens. And, um, you know, it's just a tough age to suddenly just be lose everything and so you know it, it was just turmoil uh, it, was, it was a very dark time in my life and uh, I got up to a point in that situation and I was about 16 and I said I had enough and I went to the judge of the county where I lived and demanded custody of my sister so I had I have a little sister. She's five years younger than me, and uh, here I am, 16, walking into this judge's chambers and refused to leave until he heard me, and I, I want custody of my sister, which he gave me. So looking back now, all these years later, that explains a lot of my personality, and I'm not afraid to be very disruptive. It's time to change the game. I will pull the cord and stop the tracks and say something needs to change. And I, I really think it's because of that experience. It made me strong. I'm a little fearless. And, you know, I just, it, it explains a lot as to how I act and behave in my life. We were separated. We bounced from place to place. And we ended up being separated. And I just, I couldn't sleep. I was worried about my sister. I didn't know who was taking care of her or what was going to happen to her. And it just dawned on me, I'm going to skip school today, and I'm walking to the courthouse. And, I mean, that wasn't even an easy walk. I just, I did it. I mean, just something inside me said, enough. There needs to be an intervention. And, Carla, you got to grow up right now and take charge. And rather having, you know strangers take care of us it was I had to grow up and I just I relish leading I'm not afraid to take the lead and I really think that that was my first instinct experience to say this is what I have to do and he heard me out and somehow I persuaded him to give me custody of her and you know he, to this day we are we're not normal sisters we're extremely close She's my best friend. I can't live without her. And, you know, it, it's really, it was a really good thing that happened for us. But looking back, I can't tell you how I figured it out or why. I just know I, I had enough. I, 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 just, I, knew, I knew that I had to take charge because no one else was. I think my personality is disruptive. People don't even even consider me an engineer. When they meet me, they're a little surprised that I'm an engineer. I'm not Robotronic. I'm not, you know, the, the geek, you know, walking around with my, you know, protectors over here or my big, thick glasses. There's so many stereotypes around just engineering in general. I, I completely uh, demolish that with my personality. But, um, you know, I really see engineers as game changers. Um, exactly what you're talking about. Why is Amazon at the top? It's because of the engineering that's involved with them. Why did Apple come out with the iPhone and revolutionize the world? There were engineers behind all of that. And then just within supply chain, um, I've had some really great experiences of flipping a switch and dramatically changing a business. And those are those experiences that you, you're never going to read about in the Wall Street Journal. But those are the things that are happening every day, and technical professionals are providing that value. We are going to be very disruptive, and we're going to be that workforce in the future that, you know, the, the kids are going to be looking at saying, that's what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be the technical professional. My eldest daughter's in college this year, becoming an industrial engineer, and I was driving to see her. I pull into a Starbucks parking lot. And I see the delivery happening behind the store. And I see the boxes falling all around the ground and 
You know, the, the guy who was uh, delivering all these packages were kicking them with his feet, and it was very unorganized. It was product all over the place. He's using his feet to kick them. So, being the disruptive leader, the technical professional, I walk into the store, I ask to see the manager, I shake their hand and introduce myself and said, this is what this is telling me about your company, that you really don't care about your products, it's okay for people to use their feet on my gourmet coffee and kick it from A to B, and is that really what you want your customer base to view you as? So I, I, here I am, just a customer, I don't work for Starbucks yet, but I coached the manager, took her outside, showed her what was happening. So that is what we do. The numbers happen, the design happens, all those things happen, but 90% of it is I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to connect to you, I'm going to shake your hand, I'm going to ask you what your role is, Come, let me show you something. Do you see what's happening? And what's so interesting, time and time again, is people can't see it. They, they work in their, their jobs every day, and they almost become numb to what happens around them. They don't have that perspective. And just being, you know, that is really our role. Do you see what's happening? What do you think a customer will think of this? How can you unload those cartons easier? What can make your process more efficient? And then I ordered my grande, and then I went on my way. So, <laughs> that's, that's what we do. I really wish I would have learned 10 years ago the importance of creating that relationship. That connection, it's all about people. At the end of the day, beginning of the day, end of the week, it's all about the relationships with people and understanding what's important to them. The Starbucks manager, perception of that customer, they're paying a premium for their coffee. What does that whole image look like? So really connecting with people to understand what's important to them, what are their priorities that they need to get done, and if I can align or somehow blend my agenda to fit what they're looking for, then it's their idea, and they get excited about it, and they can you can influence so many people when you first seek to have that connection. So that, to me, is more powerful than really anything else that I've ever learned in my career is it's not about my idea or my agenda. It is more about what's important to you and what can I do to blend in with your priorities so that we both are successful, but I want to make sure you're successful first. I think you need a little bit of insanity. You, gotta, you, you can't play it safe. Oh, I can't tell you how many uh, technical people I work with that you know, they get out their Christmas coffee mug in July, you know, and they're, they're perfectly happy with their cubicle, keep the head down, inbox and the outbox, and they don't want anyone to notice them. So, to me, you gotta, you gotta have some courage. You, you gotta have a little bit of insanity to say, this is nuts, why are we doing this? And if you don't feel comfortable with that, find smaller ways to seek change until you get that courage. So I think for me, my experience when I was young really gave me a huge boost of confidence and courage and it's always stayed with me. But for someone else, what I would share with them is to find small victories, those small victories, it's almost like public speaking. The more you do it, the better and proficient and more comfortable you'll be. Find those small things that you can do and relish the win. Relish that opportunity that you just did and it's going to build your confidence so that when it really comes to something that you're passionate about, you take that leap. You take the chance and say, this is worth it. It's worth it to me to step up and, and say something or do something that's going to dramatically change the situation. We need disruptive heroes. How badly does the world need disruptive heroes? Where would we be if someone didn't set out to do something different or make a change or even challenge something? So, you know, it, it amazes me. I get pretty passionate about things and 
how you, know, you know, see something on the news and I'm like, well, why is anybody pissed off about that? We need people who are disruptive. In, in a professional way and making change, but that shows that you care and that you, you have passion, you got skin in the game, and you really want to see us move to a whole new level of, of working, of living, or whatever it is that you're passionate about. So I, I feel like we, America needs that. We need people who are going to be disruptive. I feel like people need to get over it. You know, it's like I would almost pull people aside who are, you know, saying, how are we going to adapt to these kids coming into work? And how are we going to do this? And how are we going to do that? And they really are trying to make the millennials change. And I, I'm like, you need to get over this. You need to change. That's your problem, not the millennials problem. I mean, these kids are incredible. I just spent, you know, some time seeing some students coming into my company. I work at now. My daughter is in engineering school. These kids grew up with technology. They're wicked smart. They are intuitive with computers. They're an incredible resource. And we're telling them to slow down, to pay your dues. Um, and I'm like, whoa, no, you need to change. You need to give them something to do. You need to load them up with work. So, you know, I really feel like people need to really change and get with the program. These millennials need to be welcomed. They need to be leveraged. I mean, they are workhorses. How can we use them to move the company forward? And then think about it. I mean, it's almost 2020. You have a whole other generation coming behind these millennials who grew up with iPads, iTouches, t uh, tablets. So, no. You guys need to, you're, you need help. Let's let these millennials get the hell out of their way.